All right, uh, welcome for uh, Daily Bread. A little bit late, but uh, it's 4 p.m., uh, 4.15 p.m. Eastern, but yeah, you know, an afternoon uh, bread or an evening, an evening loaf, yeah, we could say. An afternoon uh, bread or, well, I got to hear my uh, stupid joke twice with the uh, volume on my phone. Okay, guys, uh, so, so far with the daily readings, the daily bread, since we've uh, started, we've gone through the Gospel of Matthew. Then we went uh, to uh, the Book of Acts, and now we just uh, finished Romans. So we're going to go back to uh, one of the Gospels. Uh, we're going to go to the Gospel of John. We have the um, the four Gospels. If you also, eventually, as you reread them, they, um, they're very similar. Uh, John is quite unique the way uh, you'll notice a difference if you read the, uh, the synoptic gospels at the start. So uh, Matthew, Mark, uh, Luke, the first uh, three, very similar. And uh, then you have John and John uh, really concentrates on the divinity of Christ. So we know that uh, when uh, the word became flesh and incarnated uh, with us, um, at that point, uh, the word of God was given a name, Jesus, that means uh, God's salvation or God saves. And uh, this is where he was baptized. And then you have the Holy Spirit, uh, like a dove, descend and stay on uh, Jesus. This is where all of a sudden you hear uh, the Father from heaven saying, this is my son uh, with whom I am very well pleased. This is part of the prophecy uh, when the word of God was still up there, uh, you know, in unity with uh, the, the father that uh, there's a prophecy that says um, a body you have prepared for me. So a lot of these uh, things we have uh, the four gospels. So Matthew, because of that, you know, genealogy at the start, uh, you know, focuses not just on that, but has a little bit of an emphasis more on um, him being from uh, David, a descendant of David. It's uh, Jesus uh, being portrayed as the Messiah. In, um, in Greek, it's Christos, uh, the anointed one. So Messiah means uh, the anointed one. It's the, uh, the king that they're, they're waiting for. Then after you have um, Mark, Mark is uh, very geared towards uh, Jesus as the suffering servant, the uh, atoning sacrifice. So it focuses, uh, like I said, not just on that, but each each gospel has a little bit of an angle that uh, they're describing uh, Jesus uh, to, to us so that we uh, understand uh, the good news of the gospel. Uh, the third one, we uh, focus uh, a little bit more on Jesus as the son of man. So his humanity. And the last one here, we focus on the divinity of Christ. So the way we uh, are to look at Jesus and scripturally supported is that uh, he's not like half man and half God. So he's not like a demigod, kind of like those uh, Nephilim hybrids. He is fully human in his nature uh, when he incarnates. He's human in every way, and he's also uh, fully divine, okay? So uh, we're going to look at a word study before, because this is the, the gospel where it says, in, in the beginning was the word, but then the word was with God, but then it was God. So, you know, there's uh, some confusion uh, with that. I think that uh, I understand the interpretation. I think I can support it uh, biblically. And uh, what we're going to do is actually go all the way uh, prior to do a word study on wisdom in the Old Testament. I am going to uh, include um, for what I consider the um, passages about wisdom is uh, the Book of Solomon. Uh, so the wisdom of Solomon. Uh, also uh, realize that in uh, Hebrew, uh, the word wisdom is hakmah. And Hakma is uh, feminine uh, because Hebrew is kind of like French. It's a gendered language. So some words are, are feminine, some are masculine. So uh, when it was uh, translated into English from uh, Hebrew, wisdom is personified. Wisdom is, is talking uh, and is personified. And it says she in, a, in our uh, English translations. 
um, well, all the translations is probably referred to uh, as a, a feminine, as a woman. So uh, I don't want you guys to get confused because what I'm going to try and show you is wisdom. Uh, what is being said about wisdom or what wisdom is saying about uh, uh, itself or himself is uh, as well pretty much what the word of God claims about uh, himself. So I want you guys to uh, see that wisdom and the logos uh, or the word, the word of God um, is wisdom and the word of God are the same thing. And this word of God which is, uh, you know, brought forth from the Father is not something that is created. So um, Yahweh, God, created uh, angels, created various spiritual uh, creatures like the cherubim and, and, and things like that. And they, he created, you know, humans, he created the universe itself and created all the animals and everything that we, we see and, and, and the whole universe uh, itself. So <laughs> we see that... Um, this was created through wisdom so that wisdom uh, it wasn't that here's god and then god you know creates wisdom and then uses wisdom to make everything else no um wisdom is brought forth so wisdom is uh within the father and that's that's where you get the uh trinity concept trying to be uh expressed uh, i think that they they go um off a little bit um, and they start saying God, uh, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit. Um, there's a specific reason why um, in Scripture it says the Son of God. Um, it's to maintain that uh, understanding of the relationship between the Father and between the Son, meaning that uh, the Son is never to be put uh, above the Father, just like any other uh, parental uh, relationship, a good son. Uh, honors the father, uh, honors uh, the, his father, um, you know, does the will of the father. So there is a hierarchy that has to be uh, respected. So you'll see that uh, Jesus Christ uh, has a God uh, that he refers to as God or uh, the father refers to um, the father is greater than I. So uh, Christ, when he took on, um, I would say the word, when the word took on human flesh uh the title uh jesus is given and then this uh reference to uh the son uh, you know uh, begins but we see prophecies in the old testament saying uh, to which of the angels did he ever say uh you know refer to a son and things like that um so i think that to put into context uh, John, because now we're going to do the daily bread, we're going to go through the gospel uh, of John. Again, John, uh, like the other uh, gospels, focus on, um, you know, they're very similar, but looking at the various titles uh, of who uh, uh, Jesus uh, Christ is, and uh, that definitely John is very centered around um, the Son of of God, the divinity of uh, Jesus Christ, the word that was not created, but was the first thing that was brought forth from the Father, because the Father was there uh, and existed prior to creation. Uh, Margaret, uh, you know, uh, we've, we've, uh, Margaret's mentioned that, you know, uh, I think God is like the whole universe, and she's right in respect that God pervades uh, the whole universe uh, and we live and have our being within uh, God. And this is also uh, the same thing that they say about uh, the word, that um, the word that was made flesh in, in the word, in God, uh, we live and we have our being. So you'll see that since the word of God is, um, since the word, word of God is the agent that is brought forth from God, not a created thing, then of course, in uh, its uh, in his very nature, the word uh, wisdom in the Old Testament uh, pre-incarnate uh, is not knowledge. Wisdom is not just like like cognitive knowledge. Um, it's not the same. Wisdom is expressed as an animating, a mobile force, uh, and obviously, hakma in or wisdom in the Old Testament is given personhood. And we notice that uh, when something has a, a spirit. That is the essence of that person, makes that person unique. Uh, we have to understand that um, the Father uh, is spirit, 
Um, the Holy Spirit is the sevenfold spirit that resides in front of the throne of the Father. So uh, the Father who is spirit, in front there is the Holy Spirit, the sevenfold uh, spirit before the throne that you can see. And then you, you, you see Jesus also uh, referred to as the Lamb of God. So there is th three persons. There are three, uh, um, you know, we, I, I don't want to say people because people tend to think of, you know, human uh, beings. Um, so let's go straight into the word study. This is something that I've done in the past. So I'm kind of reusing um, this PowerPoint presentation. Uh, this PowerPoint presentation was used in uh, some of the videos. If you look, uh, um, the Trinity, talking about the, the Trinity. I have two videos uh, explaining the Trinity. I explain it uh, the way uh, I see uh, that it is explained biblically. Sometimes uh, various people besides just the Trinity uh triangle and you know god the father god the son god the holy spirit and let's leave it at uh, at that and stuff like that can get uh, quite confusing um so i had used uh, this powerpoint when talking about uh, the trinity and trying to use um you know always uh, the actual scriptures to get information about who uh, jesus is um this is um this is like Christians have struggled with that, you know, ever since uh, Jesus left, they struggled with it as well. Uh, while Jesus was walking with them, they said like, you know, uh, show us the father. And he's like, you know, hello guys. Like if you've seen me, you have seen the father and you'll see that wisdom claims to be uh, the exact uh, image, uh, the, uh, rep the perfect representation of God's glory. So these are, are you know, um, things that as well Jesus uh, is told. So so I think it's worth looking at wisdom in the Old Testament and it'll give us uh, some information. All right. Hey, uh, LA, how are you? Uh, Sam Vabien, how are you guys? I heard a rumor that my brother started um, Bruce Sees All uh, a stream, was it today? It means uh, that he has his computer back. Uh, any questions, uh, please, uh, the uh, questions or comments that you want to be acknowledged, um, just put it in cap locks. It's easier for me to not jump over something that you perhaps were saying directly to me or the uh, question or, or, or a comment that you wish that um, that's directed, uh, you know, towards me. Besides that, uh, feel free to, you know, uh, have, have fun in the chat and uh, chat with your friends. How are you, Bobana? Thanks for uh, showing up. Um, and Darla's there. And for now, uh, it says that we have eight people. If you're um, new here, uh, give us a, a quick hello. Uh, again, uh, this is um, for Christians or those who are um, interested in uh, Christianity. We are uh, not going to tolerate any uh, negativity or, um, you know, debate from non-believers and, uh, uh, and things like that, uh, because it really drags down the whole assembly, uh, which is supposed to be an assembly of believers or those open to it. Um, this is what is referred to as a church when two or three people gather, uh, though we're, you know, far in distance, uh, we are uh, together in spirit and there is uh, the spirit of Christ uh in the midst of us. Uh, it benefits the Holy Spirit that's in every believer to uh, assemble together. And uh, that's what it says in the Bible. So let's get started with uh, the PowerPoint presentation. And like I said, let's go and see what, first of all, Old Testament wisdom has to say. Uh, and again, I'm not going to be saying she because it's going to become, again, even more complicated. Again, I'll refer uh, to she as uh, Jesus or wisdom um, or he, just for simplicity, so that we're not talking about she when it comes to wisdom. And I'm trying to say, well, that is what Jesus is making a claim of. Well, how come uh, it's, a, it's a, um, a female in the Old Testament? Just went through that. So let's get started. We're already 15 minutes in. So let's... Uh, so this will be a longer, uh, a longer daily bread. It's the, it's the first chapter of John that we're going to read, but I think that it's um, going to be 
better to start with uh, wisdom so that when we get there, uh, it's clear, um, even the first uh, passage in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and then the word was God. All right. Start the slideshow. So like I said, uh, this has been used in uh, previous live streams that was related to the Trinity being explained. So um, in the Old Testament, the Old Testament is the New Testament that is concealed and the New Testament is the Old Testament that is revealed. Uh, that's why you'll see in all of my daily breads, very often we're going very often uh, back to the Old Testament really uh, everything in the Old Testament, though sometimes uh, vague and not properly defined uh, as clearly, because obviously the New Testament is the fulfillment of the uh, Old Testament. But when we look and we know uh, the Gospels and, and the New Testament, then after when we go back into the Old Testament, we're uh, going to be able to see where the foundations of what the claim in the New Testament, all these claims in the New Testament, uh, Jesus dying for our sins, uh, um, you know, be, being put to death and coming back to life. Like, are these, are these new ideas or are there, or, or are there, uh, foundations for these, uh, ideas in the old Testament? And yes, of course there, there are, um, the whole idea of Jesus being the atonement, uh, for our sins, for our transgressions, for our inequities. Um, it doesn't say that, uh, he, uh, dies, uh, for three days and, uh, that, uh, he comes back to life, but the suffering servant at the end of Isaiah 52 and all throughout Isaiah 53 is about the suffering servant. It's a, uh, portrait of, uh, the new Testament crucifixion people that, um, uh, if you read Isaiah 53 to somebody and say, where in the Bible uh, does it say this and who is it talking about? Everyone will say it's in the New Testament and it's talking about Jesus. Even in uh, Jewish mysticism, I referred to it as uh, Kabbalah, we have a, a, the tree of life. And in a way, these are referred to as Sephirot. Uh, but in a way as well, we could say that these are the emanations of uh, God's uh, qualities and characteristics. So here would be us uh, creation over here and way up here is uh, what is referred to as crown. So we could say that, that this is the father in Hebrew, it's a uh, heater. And here we have wisdom, hakma, uh, wisdom at the, the right side uh, of the father. And that is uh, the word. Uh, that is incarnated because remember what I said, wisdom, we're going to look at what wisdom says in uh, the Old Testament. And then we're going to look at what Jesus uh, says and um, it'll add some clarity because uh, there's no difference. Uh, what wisdom is saying about um, itself or himself is uh, exactly what Jesus is claiming as well about himself. Here we uh, have Bina and this means understanding. And we understand that the Father is Spirit before his throne in Revelation is the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth and understanding, the Spirit that is given to believers, that testifies uh, to our uh, spirit. And then we uh, hear an inner testimony about the truth of the Father and the Son. That's why um, you can talk out of your ears about uh, God, the Father, you can talk out of your ears um, about uh, Jesus, who Jesus is, uh, the truth of it, uh, is this real? And really, um, everybody is in doubt unless they have uh, that, that beginning of faith, just a small amount of faith to be open enough to admit that we're sinners and open enough to uh, go through the sun and uh, ask god if it is true to reveal that to us and once we go through the sun then after we are able to receive the holy spirit that jesus promised he says that's why i have to go away so that i can send the holy spirit that is a teacher uh also testifies to the truth and is known as the spirit as well of truth and understanding that's why people without the spirit of truth and understanding that refuse to go uh through uh, jesus are uh, in doubt 
um, they they do not see God. Jesus uh, being wisdom, um, uh, wisdom incarnate, the word uh, incarnating, uh, the word that existed uh, since eternity past with the Father was never created, but was actually brought forth from the Father uh, when the Father uh, desired to create uh, things outside of himself. So we see that uh, in Jewish mysticism as well, that there's a, a threefold uh, aspect, a threefold uh, unity to uh, God. Um, this is, uh, again, I want you to start thinking of uh, Hakma is just wi wisdom. So this is a translation. Wisdom, the word, um, the logos that you might hear in uh, Greek. Uh, the uh, Son of God or the only begotten Son of God, the eternal Son of God, all of these are uh, the same thing, the same uh, thing. Uh, it's just that Jesus uh, was not always uh, Jesus. Uh, Jesus was given that name when uh, he entered uh, humanity. That's, uh, uh, that's not what his name was uh, since eternity passed. So when you look at uh, John 1, it uh, starts with, uh, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, All right? So in the beginning, again, wisdom, the Word, okay, was brought forth in the beginning. The minute God wanted to create something, uh, something new, uh, then after that, that eternal Word was brought forth from him, not created, and boom, at the beginning, before anything else starts, the word is already the uh, method or the medium or the agent through which uh, God the Father will create. Kind of uh, like a, well, this is, I'm not saying Jesus is a, a paintbrush, but uh, if an artist is making uh, a painting, the uh, artist will get the credit though the artist required an agent uh, to create that uh, painting. So um, Jesus, in a way, too, is uh, a co-creator, an agent of creation, uh, the architect uh, of all things uh, that wisdom will make claims uh, also. Um, so in, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And the word was God, meaning the same nature and essence uh, as God, because, well, if God is light, if God is uh, perfection, then anything that is brought forth from God in its very substance and uh, essence and nature has to be as well a, a God. All right. So uh, the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. So wisdom is, again, the agent of creation. In him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Um, again, why, why is it that when the light comes into the world, the truth, right? Uh, Jesus makes the claim that uh, he doesn't have the truth. He is truth, right? He is the truth that uh, Jesus came uh, into the world for that very reason, to testify of the truth. And therefore, uh, these people are like, what is truth? Obviously, the light was there and was crucified and uh, was, not, uh, was not recognized as such. And that's, again, because we require the spirit of truth and understanding uh, the, the Holy Spirit. We require, require that to know whether the word, whether it's written or the word that uh, was um, doing his ministry uh, can be recognized. So let's look at the wisdom of Solomon. I'm going to be referring to wisdom, hakma, uh, as male, just for simplicity. One less thing to switch around in our head. It says, all things that are either secret or manifest, I learned for wisdom. That is the architect of all things taught me. So here uh, Solomon is making uh, the claim that wisdom, right? Wisdom is the architect of all things. Uh, the next uh, verse, 
for wisdom is more mobile than any motion. Uh, he uh, pervades and penetrates all things by reason of his purity. For he is the breath of the power of God and a pure emanation of the glory of the Almighty. Therefore, nothing defiled can find entrance into him. For he is the reflection of everlasting light, an unspotted mirror of the working of God and an image of his goodness. Again, why are you asking me, uh, Peter? Uh, I think it was Peter. Why are you asking me to see the Father? If you've seen me, Jesus, in his incarnation, you have seen the Father. Well, if wisdom pervades, penetrates all things, that's something that uh, Jesus um, alludes to, that he is, uh, he gives uh, the, same, uh, the same explanation. Uh, we know that Jesus is uh, sinless. Therefore, wisdom is uh, pure, uh, the power of God, uh, the uh, pure emanation of the glory. We hear this referred to as Jesus being the glory of uh, the Father. We beheld his glory. Um, and a reflection, right? Um, it's a mirror. We see that the, Jesus uh, is a perfect representation of the Father. This is in the New, the New Testament. So Jesus uh, answered, don't you know me, Philip? Okay, it was Philip. Even after I've been among you such a long time, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? In Colossians, uh, Let's look at uh, what is said about uh, Jesus. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn. Now, this here, we'll have to look at what the actual uh, word is and what it means. Uh, I believe that's probably monogeneus, uh, is the first principle to be brought forth over all creation, right? So again, wisdom, I was brought forth be, uh, in the beginning before anything was created. So we see that um, Jesus, uh, because the Father is spirit, therefore is invisible. However, uh, through uh, Christ or through wisdom, uh, through the word, we uh, the dwelt, uh, uh, that incarnated and dwelt among us, um, this is the first principle that's brought forth. And now we can see the image of the invisible God through um, the only begotten Son of God. Uh, for by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the uh, beginning, the firstborn from the dead. So in he is firstborn from the dead. In respect that he uh, is the the first uh, that is resurrected from the de the dead, right? So uh, he uh, obviously after three days is resurrected, and um, he's the first fruits of the resurrection. That in all things he may have the preeminence, for it pleased the Father that in him all the fullness should dwell, and by him to reconcile all things to himself. So. God is reconciling all things to himself through the Son. Um, so in him all the fullness should dwell, and by him to reconcile all things to himself, um, by him whether things on earth or things in heaven. Now, give me one second. Last chance, uh, LA. Um, why, how, Jason, uh, how, Jason, you have slash developed faith in writings of others. Read, uh, read the Bible and figure it out for yourself. Um, I'm here to uh, share my faith. I'm not here to prove it to uh, somebody who already is uh, writing this. this. Um, anything else uh, negative, um, you can just block, uh, block LA. If you're interested, we're gonna sp we're gonna speak about Christianity. All right, uh, I have no 
no coercion. I have no, you know, anxiety trying to uh, convince anybody of, of that. If you're interested and you want to learn what I've learned and that I'm passing on, then feel free. Uh, if you have uh, questions about the theology within the Bible, I'll do my best to give you uh, what uh, I give you my best. But uh, I know uh, that comment where it's coming from, and it's, it's, it's not in good faith. So if you think you already know the truth, then uh, you know what? Go make content on your own, um, on your own site or go uh, assemble with other people that are like-minded. If you didn't mean it that way, sorry for coming uh, on harsh. All right. Um, the image, yeah, so just going through, we can see over here um, the image of the invisible God. This is uh, the claim in Col Colossians, uh, the architect of all things pervades, penetrates all things, uh, the power of God, the pure emanation of the glory, reflection of everlasting light, mirror of the workings of God, image of his goodness. Uh, John here, we see that in this passage, it says, through him, all things were made. Without him, uh, nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. So, keep uh, all of these things that I'm popping up um, are because we're going to see wisdom uh, making uh, the same claims. So uh, uh, as well, wisdom of, of Solomon, although she is one, again, she, sorry, I, for simplicity, uh, I'll say he, because uh, we're not going to, I just explained that Hakma is feminine because Hebrew is a gendered language. So uh, although he is one, he has power to do all things remaining in himself. He renews all things. In Romans, we see uh, uh, Romans 6, 4. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. So newness of life comes uh, from the word of God made flesh. And wisdom as well says remaining uh, in uh, himself, uh, wisdom uh, renews all things. John 1 says, through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. Revelation also says, he who, um, he who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. Wisdom, let's see uh, some more. When I considered these things in myself and thought in my heart how immortality is kinship uh, to wisdom. So uh, kinship is uh, another, well, we could say adoption. Um, we're taking care of our uh, granddaughter. So uh, when a family member is a foster parent, they call it a kinship. So we know that we uh, enter eternal life. And uh, this is through adoption into uh, the family of God through Christ. Christ is the only begotten son of God. And through the only begotten son of God, then we are sons and daughters, children of, uh, of God. And we know that through Christ, this is uh, eternal life. So uh, Jesus Christ, the word incarnate, what is the word? The word is as well known as hakma or wisdom in the Old Testament. So even in um, uh, Solomon's writing, he uh, as well is saying that um, immortality is connected to the word, to wisdom. John 14, 6, uh, Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Uh, 1 John 5, 11, and this is the testimony, testimony, God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Uh, wisdom, Sol uh, wisdom of Solomon uh, 9, 9, O God of my ancestors and Lord of mercy, who made all things by your word. 
and by your wisdom you formed man that he should have dominion over the creatures that were made by you and rule the world in holiness and righteousness and execute judgment in uprightness of soul give me wisdom who sits by you on your thrones i don't know if it's thrones that i made a mistake or throne uh, so again we have uh, jesus saying that he is uh, at the right hand of the father beside his throne who gained knowledge of your counsel unless you gave wisdom and sent your holy spirit from on high so we see again uh, that we uh, ourselves gain uh, wisdom and, and gain knowledge gain counsel and this is through jesus wisdom and uh, we know the truth because then we have the holy spirit that testifies to the truth uh, it was thus that the ways of those who are on the earth were corrected and men were taught the things that are pleasing to you they were saved through wisdom we could say they were saved through jesus christ right they were saved through the word that uh dwelt among us that incarnated so you can start seeing uh oh the word prior to be in, being incarnated prior to the name jesus uh, giving uh being given to the incarnation we see that yes wisdom hakma the word uh that eventually was made flesh we are saved uh through uh the word and uh wisdom uh, we are saved through wisdom as well. Uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Uh, again, uh, I believe in conditional immortality. I don't believe in eternal conscious torment. And uh, again, I'll always point it out when um, it shows up that we're always contrasting eternal life and perishing, right? Eternal life and death eternal death you could say for god did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but in order that the world might be saved through him but we see in the wisdom of solomon that uh, they are saved through wisdom and here uh, it says that wisdom or the word uh, is uh, incarnated and we are saved through jesus who is the word um, made flesh but in order that the world might be saved through him. So you can see that, you know, wisdom, hakma, word, logos, um, uh, Jesus Christ, the word made flesh, that uh, they're all making the same uh, claims in a way you can kind of like, you know, not smush them together, but uh, hopefully you're going to see that while wow, they're talking about the one and, and the same. Whoever believes in him is not condemned. But whoever does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only son of god uh here in colossians 1 15 uh, he is the image of the invisible god the firstborn of all creation again when you go to strong concordance uh and do uh the word study of the original greek um it can mean firstborn as well, but it uh, also uh, is first begotten, which would be monogeneus. And uh, this is uh, here, if you look, the foremost uh, in time, place, order of importance, um, the best chief, um, and here a strengthened form of a primary, um, which is used only as alternative in certain tenses to produce uh, from the seed as a mother, a plant, the earth, literally or figuratively to bear, be born, or you know how uh, we're seeing in other texts, to bring forth, to be delivered, uh, to be in travail. So uh, this is where some people um, have difficulty uh, saying, well, like here, you know, no, Jesus, uh, you know, had a beginning. No, Jesus had, uh, you know, didn't have a beginning. But when we go to the uh, original language, we uh, see that uh, to be brought forth from the Father, they could say uh, from uh, the bosom of the Father, is not something that's uh, created. It's something brought forth from God uh, himself. That's why the word 
in essence and nature is God as well. Because whatever comes out of God that is not created is no different from God because God is pure um, and God is spirit. So let me know if that's clear. So Proverbs 8.22, the Lord possessed me at the beginning of his work, the first of his acts of old. Ages ago, I was set up at the first uh, before the beginning of the earth. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there was no springs abounding with water. So you see, um, if the Lord possessed me, um, you know, if we just look at the, the Webster dictionary, it says, um, have, have as belonging to one, uh, own, uh, similar words, uh, have in one's possession, be the possessor of, have to one's name. And we see that, yes, of course, uh, the father, God, the father has, uh, always possessed wisdom has, uh, has possessed, uh, his word. He's always, he, he has at no point been without wisdom nor was wisdom at one point uh, not part of uh, God's nature. Um, and again, don't forget, it talks about um, wisdom. Don't just mix them up with knowledge, like knowing. Uh, wisdom is a uh, active, pervading uh, force of creation. If we continue here, verse uh, 26, before he had made the earth with its fields, or uh, the first of the dust of the world, when he established the heavens, I was there when he drew a circle on the face of the deep, when he made firm the skies above, when he established the fountains of the deep, when he assigned to the sea its limit so that the waters might not transgress his, transgress his commands, uh, when he marked out the foundations of the earth. Then I was beside him like a master workman, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing before him, always rejoicing in the inhabited world and delighting in the children of men. So in his uh, eternal divinity, the uh, only begotten son or the eternal son of God, uh, wisdom, uh, a.k.a. the word, a.k.a. the logos, uh, is the master workman at the father's side and the architect of uh, creation. Proverbs 9 says, uh, come and eat my bread, drink the wine I have prepared. So this is wisdom uh, uh, saying this in Proverbs. And uh, we already recognize the bread and wine. Again, that's not something new in the, the uh, New Testament. That is something that we see uh, as well uh, the Princess uh, Salem, uh, the High Priest of the God Most High. I uh, hope I'm pronouncing. I'm probably pronouncing it wrong, but uh, Melchizedek. That's the way I pronounce it. Um, we see that uh, he took out um, uh, bread and wine as well. So uh, John, in uh, chapter six, verse fifty-three, uh, Jesus said to them, uh, "Very truly I tell you, unless you uh, eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink His blood." You have no life in you. Uh, people, obviously, many walked away from him, didn't uh, understand the symbolism of that. We also have Jesus uh, at the Last Supper, just you know, plainly saying, "Look, um, you know, uh, this is my this is my body, um, and you know, the blood. This is uh, the wine. This is my blood, and do this in uh, remembrance of me. You know, break bread and just remember that my body was broken on the, the cross uh, for uh, your sins and uh, transgressions, for the atonement of your sins, and uh, as well as uh, the blood of the uh, new covenant uh, made with his own blood that was symbolically foreshadowed as the um, uh, ceremonial sacrificing uh, of the lamb, the lambs uh, daily. Uh, John 6, 35, Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will not hunger, and he who believes in me will never thirst. So now you see that, uh, you know, um, that, uh, that I am the bread of life. So you look at Matthew as well. And as they were eating, Jesus took the bread and blessed it and, break it and, uh, and broke it and gave it to 
the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them saying, drink ye all of it, for this is the blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Um, you see uh, here uh, that, sorry, I, I already mentioned this, at least you know I'm not making it up. Uh, Genesis 14, 18, and uh, Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High God. Um, the uh, kings, um, like King David, uh, for example, came from the tribe of Judah, and the priests usually came from um, always uh, the tribe of Levi, and uh, Jesus is the only one that uh, is at the same time both uh, king of kings and high priest. Um, during, uh, if you look at the tribes of, of Israel, um, there is nobody uh, besides this weird character Melchizedek uh, that says that as well. He has he had like no beginning and no end. So it's like another um, uh, foreshadowing or a typology of uh, Jesus. Matthew uh, says um, in uh, seven verse seven and eight ask seek and knock ask and it will be given to you seek and you will find knock and the door will be open to you for uh everyone who asks receives and the one who seeks finds and to the one who knocks the door will be open in proverbs wisdom says i love those who love me and those who seek me find me so same thing Um, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, uh, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. Blessed are those who listen to me, watching daily at my doors, waiting at my doorway for those who find me, find life and receive favor from the Lord. So again, Proverbs, wisdom is talking, uh, you know, and using, you know, the door, going through uh, the doorway uh, and finding life. And again, John, uh, we see this as well. Jesus claiming to be the door. Uh, 1 Corinthians, but to those who are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. Uh, next verse. And because of him, you are in Christ Jesus, who became to us wisdom from God, righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Colossians says, in whom all hidden, uh, sorry, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. If we look at um, Isaiah over here, Isaiah 55 uh, verse 11 says, so shall my word be, so obviously Old Testament, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and shall succeed in the things for which I sent it. So uh, obviously um, we know that uh, God is spirit, so it doesn't have a mouth per se, but um, we use uh, things like, uh, you know, creative things, things that, that of this earth to try and explain spiritual things. So uh, we have here uh, the word uh, wisdom, hakma. Uh, that is proceeding, that is being brought forth from the Father, a.k.a. out of his mouth, uh, and it shall not return to uh, God empty. So God's saying, it's going to come uh, forth from my mouth, and it's not going to return to me uh, empty. So uh, this word, wisdom, is brought forth from the Father, from his mouth, uh, metaphorically, and uh, it, it actually comes back to the Father, but it doesn't come back empty. So it's bringing back something, but it will, it shall accomplish that which I purpose. So there's, uh, it is sent out from the father. Uh, it does not return to the father void. It accomplishes uh, something, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose. So uh, we see that now the word is brought forth from the father. It doesn't return empty. It is set out to accomplish a, a purpose. And at the end it says, and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. 
So uh, again, we, we see that this isn't just a word, like a, a, a phrase or something like that, uh, that, uh, that the word of God is a creative and animating force that uh, sent from the Father, uh, doesn't come back empty, has a purpose to accomplish, and actually succeeds in it. And uh, this, again, uh, is basically another foreshadowing of uh, the gospel. Jesus explains why uh, he came into the world, uh, what he was to accomplish, and he, uh, as well, ascended to the Father and uh, sent the Holy Spirit. So, indeed, accomplished um, the you know our salvation and on his second coming, uh, no longer coming as um, uh, Messiah uh, Ben Joseph, the suffering servant, but coming back as a conquering uh, king. Um, over here, this is kind of uh, just repeating myself here. So God's wisdom is from God the Father. So God's wisdom, the Word, the eternal Son of God, is from God the Father. More specifically, it means that Jesus is brought forth by God the Father, uh, as in Proverbs, and God the Son is eternally brought forth, uh, begotten, never created, uh, of God the Father. Of course, this doesn't mean that the Son uh, was created in time. When we say the Son was begotten, uh, we mean the Son's divine essence is exactly like the Father's and also communicated from the Father. Uh, Philippians uh, says uh, right here, Philipp Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 and 11, in your relationship with each other, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God. All right, so there is the acknowledgement uh, that, uh, that Jesus enters humanity, um, is incarnated. Um, Jesus, the man, is 100% human uh like us but uh he has a second nature he did not give up uh, that second nature but added a human nature and uh so who being in very nature god so does that mean uh who being uh in very nature uh god the father or the father no jesus is not the father uh but in his nature uh, prior to uh, incarnating uh, the word wisdom uh, being the very nature of God. Uh, and we see this from the explanations of the purity, the uh, exact uh, mirror, the reflection, uh, the representation of uh, the perfection of, of God. Uh, again, what's Jesus talking about when at one point he says, uh, the Father is greater than I, speaking uh, because he's referring as well to uh, his humanity. And then after he'll turn around and say, if you've seen the Father, you've seen me. So, and he'll say stuff like, the Father and I are one. Um, so that's one in purpose. Uh, that is uh, one in uh, essence or nature or quality as well. And then uh, Jesus says, just like uh, uh, you and I, uh, Father, are one. I want to make them one with us so we become like christ um uh, like sons of god uh sons and daughters basically children of god who being in very nature god did not consider equality with god something to be used to his own advantage so again very clearly philippians uh who being in very nature god did not consider equality with god something to be used to his own advantage all right so there you see the uh the word uh was with god the word was god right so in essence nature substance quality uh uh the same substance who being uh, in very nature god did not consider equality with god something to be used to his own advantage rather he made himself nothing by taking on the very nature of a servant being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself uh, by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that 
Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Uh, if you go and do a uh, study in uh, using strong concordance, you'll see that um, Lord here means master. Um, so we see here there's to the glory of who? God the Father and Jesus Christ. Or when it says our Lord Jesus Christ, it uh, means our master. And that's why um, God the Father is referred to as Lord also because obviously um, Jesus Christ uh, comes in the name of the Father, does the will of the Father. So they are both our master, but often you'll see that the Father is uh, often um, said to be God and Jesus Christ is our Lord, our master. It says that we are uh, no longer slaves to sin, but now slaves to Christ. Uh, he's our master. And if he truly is our Lord, then uh, that's why um, uh, it's not just saying, yeah, I believe in Jesus and off we go. Uh, if you truly believe that uh, Jesus Christ is who he says he is, then you would as well follow his commandments. God's wisdom is the pattern of creation. In Proverbs 8, wisdom is present with God in the act of creation. Wisdom was beside him like a master workman and was daily his delight, rejoicing before him always, rejoicing in his inhabited world, delighting in the children of man. The term translated master uh, workman means something like architect. In his eternal divinity, the son of God, the word of wisdom, is the master workman at the Father's side, the architect of creation. Uh, Hebrews uh, 1, ver uh, chap 1, verse 1 and 3, God's final word, his son. In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things and through whom also he made the universe. The sun is the radiance of God's glory. Do you remember um, an image of God's glory? That's something that wisdom was uh, saying about uh, uh, herself or himself. The sun is the radiance of God's glory, the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven and... Um, that is enough. Yeah. So we're going to go and uh, I'm just going to look at some of the comments. And uh, then after we'll do the actual uh, uh, reading of uh, John 1. Um, Please use uh, cap locks. All right, so let's actually uh, do the reading. All right. Two seconds, guys. Off camera, spray it in. All right, so uh, John 1, the word became flesh 
in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. In him was life and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not uh, overcome it. Um, it's also uh, in some manuscripts as well. Um, it overcome could uh, it, uh, be understood as well in some manuscripts. So it says the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not understood it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light so that through him, all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born, uh, children born, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only son who came from the father, full of grace and truth. When we're, so this is the Gospel of John, um, but uh, this here uh, is referring to John the Baptist, all right, at the start, that is baptizing uh, uh, with water for uh, repentance of sin. Um, the one who wrote this is John the Apostle. There's uh, some speculation um, that this actually was written after Revelation. So Revelation was written, and then after uh, this one. doesn't really matter. Um, just something I picked up uh, hearing academics that have to talk about stuff to, to get a paycheck or something. Uh, the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only son who came from the father full of grace and truth. John testified concerning him. He cried out saying, this is the one I spoke about when I said, he who comes after me has surpassed sorry, has surpassed me because he was before me. So um, obviously uh, John is coming, uh, preparing the way uh, of the Lord. They talk about uh, sometimes that um, it's, a, it's a, a forerunner before the king arrives that <clears throat> makes way for, for the king. So they're, they're also kind of using uh, that uh, metaphor that, um, but, you know, John's really saying, you know what, prepare yourself for, uh, you know, Messiah, the King of Kings, uh, make your path straight, make yourself uh, uh, ready in preparation for the, the King. So John is the one coming ahead, um, calling you to repentance, uh, preparing your heart, kind of like the Beatitudes, uh, to acknowledge uh, your spiritual poverty, to mourn for that uh, spiritual poverty, so that you can come to uh, repentance, so that um, you are ready to receive uh, Christ Jesus. Uh, out of his fullness, we have all received grace in place of grace already given. For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, but the one and only Son, who is himself God, and is in closest relationship with the Father, has made him known. So remember, like I said, the four Gospels focus on various uh, aspects of who Jesus is, though they're similar in many ways. John is quite unique. Um, the other three are uh, referred to as uh, synoptic uh, Gospels. You put them together. Uh, there's certain places that uh, they add uh, stuff, so you have a nice, uh, very clear picture. They each work uh, upon each other. Um, this one here uh, is talking again about the divinity. So we already see here, it says, but <clears throat> the one and only son who is himself God and is in closest relationship with the father has made him known. So 
again, talking about the divinity himself, God, we see up here, it says the word was God. So uh, you can see that the focus here on John is uh, leaving no doubt that uh, Jesus is not an angel. Uh, he is uh, not just uh, a great teacher or uh, merely a human being that uh, he is as well divine. Um, just uh, trying to find where. Okay, over here, John the Baptist denies being uh, the Messiah. Now, this was uh, John's John the Baptist's testimony with the Jewish leaders in Jerusalem. Uh, in Jerusalem, they sent priests and Levites to ask him who he was. John the Baptist, uh, he did not fail to confess, but confessed freely, I'm not the Messiah. Uh, they asked him, then who are you? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. Finally, uh, they said, who are you? Give us an answer to take back to those who sent us. Uh, what do you say about yourself? John replied in the words of Isaiah the prophet, I am the voice of one calling in the wilderness, make straight the way for the Lord. Uh, now the Pharisees who had been sent questioned him, why then do you baptize if you are not the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor uh, the prophet? I baptize with water, John replied, but among you stands one, uh, sorry, John replied, but among you stands one you do not know. He is the one who comes after me, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. This all happened at Bethany on the other side of the Jordan where uh, John was baptizing. I just want to go back uh, over here where it talked about um, that he, John came before him. Uh, but just give me a sorry, guys. I just want to look back. word john testified yeah here it's uh, over here start at 15 john testified concerning him he cried cried out saying this is the one i spoke about when i said he who comes after me right so john comes pre you know prepare the way for the lord he says okay now there's uh, the messiah will come after me i'm preparing uh, the way for him so he says uh, he who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me uh, when he talks about uh he's surpassed uh john is being surpassed by jesus because jesus was before him he's speaking about jesus and his divine nature that uh jesus is from eternity uh was never uh, created so john comes preaching repentance preparing the way for jesus so in a way he's coming he's, he's before jesus but he also points back that uh he surpasses me because he was before me um there's a similar phrase sometimes uh there's one about in psalms uh it's uh then then the lord said to my lord so it, it means then yahweh said to my master um and then in uh, the New Testament, they, they say, if uh, G if um, if uh, if Jesus is a descendant of um, if Jesus is a descendant of David, King David, right? And so Jesus is known as uh, uh, son of David. He says, well, if he's your descendant, then why does uh, David say uh, the Lord said to my Lord? So again, it's kind of like uh, Jesus asked that question and the Pharisees uh, during his ministry didn't understand. And again, it's a sim similar thing. It's like, yeah, I've been born. Here's Jesus. He's been born. But you know what? Jesus is before any of the patriarchs because he's from eternity. Um, here, John testifies about Jesus. The next uh, day, John saw Jesus coming towards him and said, Look, uh, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is the one I meant when I said, A man who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but the reason I came baptizing with water 
was that he might be revealed to Israel. Then John gave this testimony. I saw the spirit come down from heaven as a dove and remain on him. And I myself did not know him. But the one who sent me to baptize with water told me, the man on whom you see the spirit come down and remain is the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. Uh, I have seen and I testify that this is God's chosen one. John's disciples followed Jesus. The next day, John was there again with two of his disciples. When he saw Jesus passing by, he said, look, the Lamb of God. When the two disciples heard him say this, they followed Jesus. Turning around, Jesus saw them following and asked, uh, what do you want? They said, Rabbi, which means teacher, uh, where are you staying? Come, he replied, and you will see. So they went and saw where he was staying, and they spent the day with him. It was about four in the afternoon. Uh, Andrew, Simon's, uh, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was uh, one of the two who heard that John, uh, who heard what John had said, and who had followed Jesus. The first thing Andrew did uh, was to find his brother Simon and tell him, "We have found the Messiah." that is the Christ, and he brought him to Jesus. Uh, Jesus looked at him and said, you are Simon, son of John, you will be called uh, Cephas, which uh, when translated is Peter, which means uh, as well rock. Cephas is Aramaic and Peter is Greek for uh, both mean uh, rock. Jesus calls uh, Philip and Nathaniel. The next day, uh, Jesus decided to leave for Galilee. Finding uh, Philip, he said to him, follow me. Philip, like Andrew and Peter, uh, was from the town of Bethsaida. Bethsaida. Philip found Nathanael and told him, uh, we have found the one Moses wrote about in the law and about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nazareth can anything good come from there? Nathanael asked. Come and see, said Philip. When Jesus saw Nathanael approaching, he said to him, here truly is an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. How do you know me? Nathanael asked. Jesus answered, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree with Philip uh, before Philip called you. Then Nathanael declared, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus said, you believe because I told you, I saw you under the fig tree. You will uh, see greater things than that. He then added, truly, truly, I tell you, uh, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. All right. Just going to look at um, some of the uh, questions. Just looking uh, through uh, the questions, guys. I uh, just don't understand how she got so far out there. If anything's getting cloned. I just want to go to the first comment. Um, LA, if you want to come on, you can come on now. Sorry if I was harsh. I'm used to uh, trolls from a certain community uh, coming and asking uh, questions that are not in good faith. Um, 
if you want to come and ask um, why I have a faith in writings uh, of others, um, every single uh, book that you read uh, and learn from likely is uh, from somebody else. Everything that uh, you learned uh, in uh, any science textbook as well is a writing from others. Um, I um, I don't mind uh, if it's uh, this time or another time, if you would like to come on, uh, I'm not going to uh, give the whole long uh, testimony, but I've basically, look, I've always believed uh, in uh, God. Um, I believe that um, if the universe came into existence at one point, that means time, space, and matter had a beginning. It means that um, currently um, with um, the secular materialistic uh, science, they're quite comfortable with saying nothing created everything. If uh, nothing created uh, everything, it means that uh, there's no real purpose really for um, uh, any of this. This is uh, just uh, nothing creating everything. It's a unguided process that um, just by sheer chance um, uh, we've gotten here. Uh, we're not made <clears throat> in the image of God, obviously. We uh, come from uh, a primordial uh, soup of uh, molecules of likely, um, you know, carbohydrates, fats, and, and proteins, and, and things of uh, some sort. Uh, and therefore, uh, if you look at anything, um, let's say a virus, is a virus morally uh, good or evil? Does uh, uh, any microorganism really have any moral agency? I would say no. Um, the whole animal kingdom, uh, which we are mammals, uh, when a shark uh, chomps down on somebody's uh, leg that's uh, surfing in Florida, um, <clears throat> would we say that uh, that shark is evil? No, I, I would say that the, no, the shark is uh, has no moral accountability or no, no moral agency. Uh, so all of a sudden we arrive to uh, humans and um, uh, if we believe in a law giver, if we believe in a, a creator that uh, gives the moral law, then we have accountability and we can explain why um, uh, there is good and evil because of uh, a creator. If we just come from a, a molecular soup, then uh, that means uh, that we're no different than uh, bacteria. We're just far farther along this blind evolutionary uh, process. So um, why would we uh, philosophically with uh, that uh, starting point, that presupposition, uh, those assumptions, why would uh, anybody ask me to be held to anything higher than a donkey in the field or a tiger in the jungle? Um, but uh, we see that uh, written uh, in, in man within man is uh, uh, most people have a conscience. Uh, sin and rebellion and, and um, things like that can warp a person's conscience. But for some reason, uh, it's only human beings that run around talking about uh, good and evil. And um, Christians or uh, at least have uh, a philosophical grounds for that. And uh, course non-believers or atheists uh, that or just believe in the material uh, universe can act morally they just they just can't really give an, a, a, an explanation with their worldview uh, so I see that if at one point time uh, came into existence then whatever caused it and it's either nothing or something I go with there's something doesn't prove a Christian God but it does prove that if uh, something created time, then that sink, that source of time uh, is timeless. Um, if uh, matter at one point uh, and all the elements and, and stuff like that, the, the form, the substance, the material in the universe at one point did not exist, it happened at the Big Bang, um, we could say, then uh, the source of material is immaterial. And uh, if we see the this universe that is... is uh, vast, vast, you know, it, and, and they, they can look and see uh, that it, it is uh, expanding, they say. So we can see the uh, immense, uh, um, you know, size that uh, this source is able to create. Therefore, uh, 
possibly uh, if we look at the limit. So the universe is vast but limited because it's expanding. So if it expands a little bit more, it'll be more vast, but still always at one uh, time is still finite. Uh, therefore, um, you could say that what uh, came out uh, could be infinite. So you get the point that it, either you believe that nothing created everything, and the minute that you say, well, maybe something created it, then you can see that, well, then, you know, there was a source. And if it, if it was before time, uh, the fabric of time came into existence it has to be before time these uh, start to get uh, to be um, uh, characteristics that we use to describe uh, God so that doesn't prove uh, the the Bible whatsoever but to me it, it proves that there is uh, something uh, beyond creation that is the source of all uh, this stuff that science says uh, at one point didn't exist so there has to has to be a source uh, in my book um, the fact that um, uh, we have uh, morality, we have a, a, a compass, a conscience that is uh, within us that uh, uh, we seem to all be aligned with. Uh, and, and theists say that it's God-given and atheists say that it's, it's just, they, 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 they don't know how to explain it. They'll say that morality is not objective. There's no objective lawgiver, that things are subjective. Uh, they'll come up with like, well, uh, society decides uh, what the greater good is, but we know societies in the past have thought that the greater good was to wipe the the Jewish nations, Jewish nation off the uh, earth. Uh, the Romans thought uh, many uh, practices were beneficial. <coughs> there were soldiers throwing uh, deformed babies or flawed babies was uh, good. It was for the better good of the Roman Empire, all sorts of things like that. Uh, then after, uh, so that gave me a, a, always a belief that there uh, is uh, some kind of mind. Then I see within uh, creation, I see DNA that uh, emits a biophoton uh, light. I uh, see that um, uh, we still cannot uh, explain the origin of life. Darwin explains uh the uh, creation and the evolution of various complex body systems that arise from life uh, but uh, that does not um, that does not uh, Darwin doesn't explain biogenesis the origin uh, of life LA if you just uh, showed up you can rewind a little bit I'm now that I'm done um, I uh, I'm kind of explaining uh, first of all how why I believe that there is that that there is probably something out there uh, you can rewind. <clears throat> I'm sorry if your uh, question was in good faith. Uh, I deal with uh, a community that's hostile to Christianity, and um, I assume that um, I'm, I assume that it wasn't a, a question in good faith. I'm having my doubts now, um, so I do apologize if uh, the question was truly just meant like I want to know, Jason, why you think God exists. Um, you just popped on back on um i don't mind having a discussion with you as well you can come on i can apologize uh to you uh face to face if i uh, uh misread your comment i would feel bad if that was the case um yeah so i was just talking uh, about uh why i believe that there is uh something that created uh everything um as well, I was I explained, you know, the morality and stuff like that. Uh, that is another uh, clue um, that, that um, why I believe. Um, so uh, I, I spent 20 years just on a spiritual uh, search, spiritual path. Tried, read, read a lot about everything and anything I, I could get uh, my hands on. I'm not born a Christian, but maybe five years that I'm a Christian. Um, I had uh, all sorts of uh, beliefs. I kind of uh, created what I thought God should be. And uh, I was getting nowhere spiritually. Um, I saw, um, I understood what my ego was. I understood that uh, I better not uh, manifest that. Uh, I should uh, try and not manifest that as much as possible. But uh, there was no uh, true inner transformation. It was just me suppressing uh, my lower um, uh, sinful uh, nature and knowing that I shouldn't, you know, be 
be prideful. I shouldn't be this. I shouldn't be that. But in a way, uh, what was going on inside me and uh, the mask that I was putting on uh, when I go out, there was a big uh, difference in them. So for me, I, um, I, um, I suffered uh, emotionally from this inner emotional uh, spiritual state that I was in trying to read up all these books about enlightenment and things like that and not knowing being honest with myself seeing that i was deeply bothered by uh this lower nature and i had nothing else to hold on to and to grasp um one thing that uh, made me seriously consider uh, uh you know a historical uh christ was uh the shroud of turin i am uh, thoroughly convinced like 99 percent 99.7 percent um convinced about the shroud of turin science can't explain why uh the image is on the uh one tenth of uh, uh the surface of the uh, linen it's the image uh that is not painted science can't understand why this image is right on the surface of the linen uh and it has all the markings of a crucified man has uh the nail marks um it has the the wounds uh in the uh, the ankles has the side wound, wound from the spear uh, the person uh, shows that uh, has been flogged uh, with over um, 300 uh, uh, flogging marks because they were flogged with a uh, fla flagrum that has uh, uh, le its leather straps with uh, beads on them and therefore each whip could be around um, six to eight um, uh, lashes and he was uh, you know flogged repeatedly the image uh, as well has that um there is um bilirubin uh there's blood there's uh creatinine there are uh compounds found in blood and bilirubin only shows up when you have somebody who uh has uh, uh been uh, in a traumatic injury uh, that keeps the blood uh, red so doing a deep dive into the uh, Shroud of Turin, even prior to being a Christian, was another uh, reason uh, to believe. And uh, then after it was just uh, me saying a prayer, um, knowing the uh, New Testament, not understanding who Jesus was, really having doubts, had all sorts of stuff. But I, I, I had always spoken uh, to God. I just uh, felt like I wasn't getting anywhere. I wasn't advancing, and there was doubt in in you know in my mind. I used to you know I told uh, during my my prayer with uh uh when i came to to christ i said look god i said if this is the way you want me to do it i said i'm willing to try because for 20 years i've been uh, avoiding that i've been denying it i don't think that this is a uh, uh, true and uh, i said but i'm not getting anywhere so i said uh, uh if this is the way that you truly want me to approach you to have a relationship uh, then I am willing to try. And it was, a, it was, you know, just me talking like this to him with my doubts and saying, uh, okay, you know, and I acknowledge my sins for a long time. I knew I was a sinner for a long time. Uh, I had, uh, the weight of sin uh, on me, um, the guilt of it on my conscience, uh, the inability to grasp onto anything, but my, my lower nature and my flesh to, to say like, well, this here is my, my fallen nature whispering in my ear and I have a conscience and it seems like um, it's it's not empowered with anything that uh, I can overcome um, and uh, yeah anyways um, just like the New Testament says uh, I received the Holy Spirit and it says that uh, the Holy Spirit is given to those who go through uh, Christ Jesus and that is the inner testimony it is from there that you understand uh, that it's true um, because the Holy Spirit testifies to our spirit that uh, that Jesus Christ is uh, who he says he is. And um, then after, it's just going into the Old Testament and seeing how uh, 65 uh, books can be written by 40-some uh, authors, I believe it's 40 or 44, uh, authors over uh, thousands of, of years, uh, with centuries sometimes in between. And uh, as a Christian, you can look back and you just see a continuity of it. We see that uh, straight from Genesis to Revelation, 
if you're somebody who really dives into uh, the Bible um, as well, empowered by the Holy Spirit, uh, the book just opens itself uh, up to you. And uh, there is um, there is just so, so much depth to it that we're not just talking about uh, the story. First of all, the New Testament, all the stuff that it's uh, talking about is justified and is uh, within the Old uh, Testament. Um, we also know that uh, academics don't deny the validity of the scriptures and the authenticity, uh, not the claims being made in it, but the uh, historical context and the authenticity that these are um, the uh, Gospels, those who wrote them, believed with all their heart that they were telling the truth. Were they deceived? Possibly. Uh, academics can't make the claim that it is true, but uh, certainly that it is written um, as a uh, with a purpose and that those that wrote it uh, believed it with all their, their heart. We see that the uh, epistles are basically, uh, a lot of them are written, um, you know, by the apostles, but Paul writes a good uh, number of them. Um, Galatia, uh, Philippi, um, Thessalonians is from the, so it, these are various um, areas uh, where churches are springing up and they're written like letters. It looks like Paul is literally writing a letter to the assembly of believers that are popping out in various uh, various uh, areas and that's why uh, you know Philippi is called Philippians uh, and, and things like that. Uh, uh, no, my faith uh, was like this when I started. My faith in uh, this you know um, Bible and uh, my faith has grown, it has grown uh, through um, personal experiences uh, that, that uh, are to me very tangible uh, to the uh, inner uh, life that I live now through the Holy Spirit, uh, seeing the difference. Um, I also uh, know uh, me uh, when uh, the Holy Spirit is grieved, uh, when I am not uh, feeding uh, my daily bread, when I'm not being washed from the uh, uh, washing of the word, when the Holy Spirit is uh, almost... Uh, you know, just a concept to me. Sometimes if I veer uh, off course, I feel dead inside and uh, things get uh, very uh, cloudy and uh, I see a, a change in my uh, disposition, in my character. I, uh, uh, in retrospect, I can see that I, I, I regress uh, and this is why I've recommitted to the daily bread uh, as a way of, uh, you know, not not buying a gym membership and uh, after a couple of months fizzling out and then going till next year before I recommit. Um, and uh, yeah, so there's a lot more, uh, you know, uh, reasons. Um, and I've uh, done more and more re research and I've been uh, convinced uh, more and more. Um, it says device not connected, uh, LA. Uh, 